The back rooms have been portrayed in various ways. The most common concept I kept seeing was the escape room concept, which is what I call it. It's basically going through the main levels of trying to survive the monsters, or as they are called, entities. A great example of that would be Escape the Back Rooms, but I'm not here to talk about Escape the Back Rooms. Dota is a great game, you should check it out. I'm here to talk about what I believe is the most accurate Back Rooms game, The Complex. Before I start talking about this game, I do want to say, yes, I have covered this game before, but it's terrible. It's on YouTube anymore, it's removed, do you know how laughably bad it was? This video isn't supposed to make up for that disaster of video. However, that's not the only disasters of video I had in this channel that's now gone. I delayed a few more, but I won't be talking about those for now. Now on topic, The Complex is a backrooms game that resembles the found footage videos that are all over YouTube. You simply explore these very unnerving rooms that resemble childhood memories. So why do I think this is the most accurate backrooms game? Well, generally, the backrooms are supposed to be empty and feel like they're not. There's nobody around, there are no monsters, and the rooms feel a bit off. It's supposed to make the player feel emotions that feel very out of place. This game matches that concept perfectly. No entities, only emptiness. That's only a very crappy summary of what this game is about. I'm about to get into deep detail what this game is really about. For those who don't know what a limo space is, it's these places that give up feelings of nostalgia. Depending on the type of person, they might also be considered satisfying. They tend to be disconnected from reality and usually have a 1980s through early 2000s look. This game features a ton of those spaces, some of them you might have seen before or recognize. The spaces in this game try to match the limo space tone. They contain furniture that are in odd places and room designs that seem like they're from your dreams. The game contains examples such as an empty grocery store, office areas with very high ceilings with walls that don't reach, and houses that are in the middle of nowhere. Now for those who don't know, this game was actually based on Kane Pixel's backroom series, as it says in the credits. There are a few references that are caught in the game, majority of them are from both Found Footage 1 and 2. There is however no soundtrack in this game at all, except for the credits. Instead, the game greets you with eerie noises that make you think there is something near. I really love this approach because it gives the player a very chilling feeling, especially when they're actually exploring these normal spaces across the backrooms. Here, you guys can take a listen to it. So what makes this Backrooms game different from the rest? Well first, it doesn't use the word Backrooms in their title, it uses a different word instead. But that's just a minor change that this game uses. The big changes in this game contain no entities, compared to what inside and escape the Backrooms have. It relies on level spaces, like I said before, which is something that all Backrooms games should have. The majority of them just stick with the first three levels, which doesn't match the Backrooms accurate concept. Now this is something I don't believe anyone has pointed out yet, it's the game's graphics. This exploration game contains the most realistic looking graphics I've ever seen, and this was made in Unreal Engine 5, I think. I'm not gonna say anything else about it since you can see for yourself. I also wanted to point out the VHS filter that's used in this game. I love it. It matches the accuracy of exploring the backrooms with the old 90s camera. There used to be a flashlight, but I got removed. I don't know the specific reason why. I mean, other backrooms games used it. Plus, I never got to experience it myself since I got the game when update 2 dropped. So now I'm gonna explain how the backrooms work according to the complex. This is basically a non crappy summary of the game. So the backrooms in this game matches how the backrooms are originally supposed to work. The person no clips for reality and starts to explore the untouched dimension. This game behaves exactly like that. You fall for the ceiling at the start and end up in the backrooms. Now the backrooms in this game take up 7 layers, though the backrooms don't act up in layers. This game chooses 2, which I mean there's nothing wrong with that. Um, actually, um, who are you? Wiki, there are however layers, which are also called levels. You see, there are many layers. Hey, I'm in the middle of something. Shut up, let me talk. Inside the back rooms, there's the Habitat Zone, the Pipe Dreams, the Electrical Station, the Abandoned Office, the Tarot Hotel, and I can even go on the proof. Hey, could you please go away, oh, Eddie? Please consider developing your stop! Just let me finish. Thank you. You know what? Let me just guide you to the exit door. I think that's a better option. Here you go. Just don't ever come back. Alright, bye bye. H have a good day. Alright, sorry about that, folks. Alright, where are we on? Alright.
An elevator takes the player to each layer, which they can explore several parts of the back rooms, such as the pool rooms, the suburbs, and even the level 0 expansion. The layers of the complex travel downwards. The first layer you enter contains a bunch of liminal spaces based on childhood memories. The second layer takes you to the pool rooms, where it's basically a church-like area. The third layer resembles a hotel, which also features a bit of level 0. The fourth layer is technically the expansion of level 0, just with bigger and higher rooms. The fifth layer is where the suburbs lie. They resemble the same exact ones from the Pitfalls video from Kane's Backroom series. The final layer is supposed to feel very empty. There are three car houses that are in the middle of nowhere, which is where the exit is. The game ends with an elevator crashing, but if you notice, only the camera survives. The player doesn't escape. Nobody escapes the backrooms. Well, according to this game. So I have nothing else to talk about since this game is like 20 minutes long. However, the game is free on the Steam store if anyone wants to check it out. However, they are making a sequel. The release date is still unknown. Actually, I do want to share my thoughts on this game. In my opinion, it's not all that engaging in terms of gameplay, unless you like only the W key, but it does seem like the actual backrooms experience of how it's meant to work. I'd say it's engaging around the experience, if you know what I mean, but there's nothing wrong with making a backrooms game that doesn't fit the actual purpose of what it's supposed to be about. I mean, there isn't anything engaging about holding one button, but in terms of experience, I do recommend you get the complex a shot if you really want to get chills. Otherwise, there's always other backrooms games, but I recommend you check out Inside the Backrooms or Escape the Backrooms if you want an engaging backrooms game that is. Thanks for watching, be sure to sub to the channel, and if you like, you can also join my Discord server as well as follow my Twitter page, and I'll see you next time. Oh, and one more thing, these two games were made on the same engine.